Hmm. Books, books, books. So many to read and all the time in the world. Which one will we read today? Ooh. This one will do. While it was a tough life for most, it was a simple life for some. Some spent their time pursuing riches and powers, and all things shiny and new. Others spent their lives looking for meaning in the vast expanses of an empty world. But our story today focuses on neither of these people. Today we talk about the simple folk. The ones that find happiness in the little things, the passing moments. The ones that never seem to be in a rush, and have the luxury of being able to enjoy a quiet moment by the fireplace. Today our story is about this type of person, but by some kind of happenstance, find themselves in the role of an adventurer. When Phil wasn't baking, he spent his time gathering materials to expand his simple home. Not so much that he would construct a monument to his greatness, encased in walls as tall as the redwoods, but just enough space that he was able to practice his hobbies and interests with plenty of breathing room. And Phil was running out of wood. Although Phil had explored every single yard of this forest, today, something felt different. He felt as if there were invisible eyes peering from the darkness, and on multiple occasions, Phil could have sworn that he saw a moving shadow. Regardless, he pressed on until he found the cave. This cave, strangely, was new. Confused, Phil checked his map, and to his surprise, there was no mention of such a prominent cave from when he first charted the forest around him. Squirreling the map back away into his satchel, Phil lit a torch and proceeded towards the cavernous mouth. The cave felt like it led directly to the heart of the world a never-ending corridor of darkness, illuminated only by the flicker of Phil's flaming branch. Seeing a drop a few feet tall, he edged towards the steep drop, peering into the low-lying tunnel until... Before he even got a chance to dust himself off, Phil was quickly greeted with a sight that sent a grimace across his face. Phil, although in shock, took out his sword and started swinging, but quickly found himself on the back foot. Making sure not to let the creeper get too close, he kicked and swung, but was quickly feeling the effects of the small creature's claws at his ankles. Phil's had tumbled and quickly the creature was on him, clawing at his arms that shielded his face like a vicious wildebeest. Phil was in a bad way, barely being able to keep the surprisingly strong creature away from his face. He quickly reached for his torch, and with his free hand, bashed the creature over the head as hard as he could. It burst into flames, spreading like a fiery plague to Philz's robes. He kicked at the little ball of inferno, and as it writhed on the floor across the cave, Phil frantically swatted at the flames that now tickled his skin. Phil screamed in panic and fury, vowing that this is not how it would end, until he turned and saw the creature inches from his face. When Phil awoke, he found himself surrounded by trees. Where the cave had once been, the cave was no more. And even stranger still, he felt no residual pain from his encounter with the creature donned in gold. Not a scorch, not a scratch, not a bruise, nor a bash. He sat up, rubbing his head and wondering if it was all some kind of horrid dream, a nightmare that he had dreamt after falling tired from collecting too much wood. But then he heard a sound. Phil clamoured to his feet, eyes scanning the darkness from under the treetops. Another. And another. Before long, the air was filled with nothing but the cries of a thousand faceless things. Phil was drowning in a sea of noise, poised and ready to see what might lash out at him from beyond his human gaze, until a bush finally rustled behind him. He turned on a dime, poising his sword towards the shrub and awaiting what might jump out at him. With a waddle, out stepped a crow. It looked up at him, blinking once, standing still, and then surprisingly, it spoke. F!
You should subscribe. Should subscribe. Should subscribe. At first, the crows were nothing but an inconvenience. They followed Phil wherever he went, pestering him with comments about everything he did. Whether he was mining... Where are the diamonds? Iron poggies! Creeper, watch out! White people happy! Cutting down trees... Sprout what is better! Get apples, pa! Have you listened to Pebble Brain, pa? Or even when he was baking... Bread, pa! That's a job in it! And sure, they were annoying at first, but after a while, Phil began to see the merit of having a group of loyal followers at his disposal. After a long, arduous taming process, Phil managed to settle the crows down, although they never forgot their mischievous ways. Phil did once wonder where they came from, but for now resolved to be happy with the company he had by his side. It had been a long day, and the sun fell ever closer to the horizon. Phil waved a goodbye to the crows and headed for bed. He lent his staff by the door side, brewed a cup of herbal tea, climbed the stairs and shuffled towards his room. Oh, you're home. A female voice cried from behind the mask of a skull. Her amethyst eyes pierced into Phil's heart and grabbed a hold of his soul. The room went dark as Phil drew his sword, desperately trying to find the words to ward this figure away. You're welcome for the crows, by the way. But you must be more careful. I won't always be able to bring you back. Filza was confused, barely mustering a sigh of confusion. But honestly, I kinda like you. So I think I'll keep you around for a while. Phil shook his head and readied his sword. He nodded to the door, motioning for the figure to leave. You want me to leave? Phil, I'm the one keeping you alive. You see, unbeknownst to Phil, standing before him was the goddess of death, and it seemed she had taken quite the liking to him. That night in the cave, it was all supposed to end. Phil was supposed to die to that feral creature that clawed at his face, but was saved by the one that now commands his attention. And she wasn't quite done yet. Listen, you're cute and all, and while I'd love to stay and chat, I am here for a reason. Something is coming, Phil. Something really quite horrifying. Usually I'd revel in the fireworks, but I've grown fond of watching you on your adventures. When it comes, you need to head west. That is where your destiny lies. And that is where you'll find your hero. Don't ask how I know all of this, just... Just stay safe, Phil. I cannot save you every time. And with that, she left. All that remained were the whispered words, If you need me, I will be there. That lingered in the air she left behind. Phil, understandably, was confused and demystified. He had never seen something make such little sense before. His life up until now had been relatively simple, and a brush with the face of death was certainly not one of the things he had predicted a few days ago. Regardless, Phil couldn't let the Lady of Death get into his head, and so settling into bed, Phil's a resolve to get some shut-eye. Phil awoke with a sudden fright as he heard the galloping of horses grow near. Grabbing a crossbow from atop his dresser, he rushed to the window to get a glimpse at the source of his rude awakening. Outside the window, he spied a cloaked figure on a horse, blacker than the night that surrounded him. But before Phil could load his weapon, a great orange glow flickered from across the house, and soon the orange light shone through every single window in the building. But what he was greeted with sent a strike directly to his heart. And as the frantic crying of crows grew louder, Phil watched as the cloaked figure disappeared into the night. Quickly, he ran to the nearby river and collected as much water as he could, but when he turned his back, the fire had already spread to his house. Phil sprinted, throwing the contents of the bucket at the worst of the flames. He launched the empty bucket into the window of his attic, calling for the crows to escape and charging into his house. The flames licked at the rafters all around, tearing the walls he had spent so long crafting to the ground. Phil ran for the stairs, dodging flames and falling debris as he climbed towards the bedroom. Phil dashed for his sword, his maps, a quiver of arrows and as much bread as he could fit in his pouch. He tightened his straps as the building burned around him, heading for the door. Which was obviously no longer an option. Phil's eyes darted across the house, watching as his home was reduced to cinders around him. Debris fell all around, narrowly missing Phil at every turn. The crows sat and watched the flames dance the dance of destruction inside their old home, growing ever more restless as Phil spent more and more time in the building. Until, through the window, Phil leaped for his life, 
Thil sat with his crows, watching the house fall into ruins at the command of the burning beast. If only he had listened. But none of that mattered now. His eyes scanned the horizon, until finally, they met her. Figure it out.